Hello and welcome to Draw Cartoons. Ensure you watch the entirety of today's video, like you should with all of my videos, to get the best tips that the skippers miss out on. Hit that like button and the subscribe button as doing both really helps the channel and hit that bell so you never miss a tutorial. Let's get started. Okay, I think for this one, a good place to begin would actually be to just kind of go over how to do the head by itself first. Actually, let me start that on a new layer. There we go. So, a great way to draw this, a really easy way to draw this, straight up, is just you just draw a box. You just draw a square, just like this, and then you draw a cross inside of it. So we usually do like a circle for the head, right? But this time, we're actually doing a square. Make sure you get the kind of angles going on here. You don't want to smooth it off too much. So we've, we've divided it into four quarters like this. And we usually do this to kind of help get the proportions right. And uh, Marshmallow's head, honestly, no different. So you want to do a kind of a teardrop shape that's pointing towards the middle of the face, <clears throat> like that. And then another one crossing over it, because right? he has actually got X's for eyes. But they have a funny shape to them. They're very, very kind of sharp at the top, the points, and then really kind of thick and blunt at the bottom. So the best way to do this, in my opinion, is to draw this kind of crisscross teardrop shape like that. So you're going to get a lot of line, uh, lines overlapping, but that's not going to matter when you actually like color this in like that. I'm just kind of quickly shading it in just to show you. And there you go. The, the eyes are pretty much bang on. And now for the smile, the smile actually starts a little bit further to the side of the face then the eyes end, so you want to draw this big kind of crescent shape right across. Pretty much from one side of the face to the other. And then another one underneath, don't draw it too wide open, because it isn't too wide open. I've actually, I've actually overdone that bit. It's not too wide open, it's kind of a narrow smile. And again, you colour that in whatever way you want, doesn't really matter which way you do that. And there we go, we have Marshmallow's face like immediately, it's super fast. Uh, and, and pretty easy to do once you know the technique. So you pretty much just have to do this and then add it to the body of a human being. So I'm going to do that uh, here. And when we get to the end of this, I have another thing to show you, which you've probably already spotted over on the left. I'm going to show you how to draw that head at pretty much any angle. And it's fairly advanced, but it's also like weirdly easy, if that makes sense. I'm actually going to make this preview a little bit bigger, because I've made it very, very small, just so it's a bit easier for you guys to see. So there we go. Let me just resize that for you. There we go, I'll start this again. So, that's the beauty of working with a computer, you can make things bigger anytime you want. So we're going to start again with a kind of box for the head, like this. Okay. And you know what might help a little bit drawing this, is if you don't, don't curve that, and don't curve that, but curve this at the top and curve this at the bottom of it, just a tiny bit. I don't know if you can really see, but I've curved this one upwards a little, like that, and I've curved this one downwards a little. Because the head is, it's basically just a cylinder, right? So for that to come across, you're going to want to draw a little bit of curvature. It's just, just a tiny, tiny amount of curvature. And again, we're going to cut this into four quarters, which just kind of helps us place everything. So we're, again, we're going to go for that kind of crisscross teardrop shape, both sides of the head, like this. Bada bing, bada boom, done straight away. And I'm just gonna, for the sake of clarity, actually shade that in so it actually looks like his eyes rather than a few crisscross shapes. And now the smile, the smile goes right across the face like this. It's a pretty unique kind of look, honestly. Okay, so you got a little head, so what are you gonna do about the body? Well, we're gonna kind of break up the body into kind of nice cartoonish proportions. So I like to draw a little line underneath the head and then a wider line, wider than the head, look how far across this comes compared to the head, for the shoulders, then draw two lines that come down a bit but at a slight angle. And then I kind of, kind of draw a line across for the waist. If it's helpful at this point you can continue, I mean we often actually start with a line of symmetry, so you can actually continue that on down to about here where the floor is going to be if you want. But that's kind of showing you piece by piece. So once we've got this line of symmetry in we can actually see there's a mistake here. This side of the torso is a bit thicker than this side of the torso. Well, I don't want the torso to be too thick, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to try that again, and I'm going to bring it in to about here. I don't need these lines to be quite as wide anymore. So the point of that was just to show you 
um, how important a line of symmetry can be, it can immediately point out that your, your character can be quite lopsided. And I've been drawing for more years than I care to admit at this point, and I still uh, make those mistakes without a line of symmetry, so that's just how important that line is. A couple of blobs either side of the upper torso to show where the shoulders are going to be, and at this point you can position the arms any way you want. You can have them up here like he's raving if you really, really want. Just for the sake of ease of drawing it and showing you, I'm going to draw his arms kind of coming out like this. Just kind of to the sides. And for the legs, I like to give a little bit of, almost like a belt shape there, a little bit of give at the bottom of the torso before I start the legs. And then either side of this bit of his hips here, I draw a line out like that and end in a triangle for the feet. Okay? And it helps, it helps if you add a little ball where the knee is going to be, because that will help you bend the leg properly. So as you're coming down, do a little circle, and then bend the, the leg just a little bit. Look how subtle that bend is. It's coming out at an angle, it hits the circle, and it goes pretty much straight down. And now for the inner leg, we'll draw a crotch quite low, like this. Um, because his trousers are usually kind of baggy at the crotch. They're not so baggy around the actual leg, but they're baggy at the crotch, so we'll do it that way. And then for a thigh, we'll tuck it in behind the knee and then bulge it out a bit for his calf like that. And I'm going to do the same on the other side, so just kind of tuck it in under his, under his knee and then out and in for the calf, just like that. Uh, okay, so we might as well go back to the top and start kind of working our way down. So we'll draw a little neck, so super easy, just a couple of lines either side of that central line. Then we'll kind of bring this down towards the shoulders like that, so we get a kind of natural looking curve. No one's shoulders are a straight line like that, unless they're like a super cartoony kind of Frankenstein character. Um, but those those aren't super common. So bring this down at an angle towards the shoulders to get kind of natural look to it. And then just kind of follow the guideline. Okay, follow it down to about here where you ended the length of the arm. And then across. And then follow it back. And try and get the width on this side of the arm the same as this side of the arm as well. So again, we're just gonna bring this down across that midpoint and up to the armpit there. And then we'll add a little curve at the ends of his sleeves, just so they actually look like sleeves and not just weird tubes. Now, um, hands. <laughs> I have actually covered how to draw hands. I'll put that up here now. You might want to see that first, but um, I'm going to give you a quick crash course on how to draw hands like I usually do. So I like to draw a little box floating off the edge of each arm. And this isn't like a realistic way to do hands, it's a very cartoony uh, way to do hands. And if you're here, well, that probably suits you just fine. So what I like to do is break up this part into four parts by adding circles. One, two, three and four. Now notice how there's a bit of a curve to how these are distributed. This circle and this circle, that's one and that's three, they actually sit on the line like that. Now circle two comes off the line like this. And circle four for the little finger, that's the pinky, actually sits inside the line like that and we get this natural kind of curve just like that. I don't know how easy that is to see, I might do a dedicated tutorial for that, um, but hopefully you guys can actually see what I'm doing there. So if it's helpful at this point you can draw a small wrist coming out of the, the sleeves, just kind of connecting the hand, and now you pretty much just position the fingers, right? We're just going to go for a typical kind of fingers out sort of shape for this, because that's all I want to do in this particular tutorial, I don't want to focus on the hands too much, because it's not actually about the hands. So we'll draw a thumb, curving out, and as we get back to the box, we'll draw a little bump like that, with a big kind of toony thumb, so we'll do it again, give it a bit of a curve before we go back, and then a bump, and that bump kind of ends up in the middle of the box. And now, one finger, two finger, try and make these fingers all the same length, because they'll actually end up the right length because of uh, where the circle is. So if you make each, uh, each finger more or less the same length, but you start them from the circles, they'll end up with that nice kind of curve, if that makes sense. So I'll show you that again. This one's going to be this long, 
This one's also going to be the same kind of length, but it's starting a bit further from the hand. That's going to be the same length as the index finger. And the pinky is just kind of small, kind of sticks off the side. So there we go, a quick kind of crash course in hands before we carry on. So we're going to add a little crew neck for his uh, long sleeve shirt. And now the torso is looking a bit robotic, it's looking a bit, you know, unnatural. So to fix that, all we have to do is kind of crease it up a little bit. So as the arms come into the torso, I'm just going to kind of add some small folds before I then draw where the ribcage is going to be, give it a bit of a wiggle as we approach his belt. Okay, you see that? Like kind of creases, kind of folding as we get towards the belt. Now whether or not he's wearing a belt, I'm going to give him a belt because I like drawing belts. <laughs> That's the only reason why. But um, this rectangle can pretty much stay. I'm just going to add a small rectangle there as like a belt buckle. And the legs are mostly done. We've actually already done the inner leg like that. So all we have to do is give the outside of the leg more of a natural curve. So we kind of go around the guideline we did for the thigh, a bump for the knee, and then bring this pretty much straight down towards where the shoe's going to be. That's probably going to take a few tries to get that right. The, the really subtle, <coughs> pardon me, uh, kind of style to the curves is not easy to get right, especially not first time. It's something that comes with practice. But that's why the guidelines are there. The guidelines are basically there to show you this is the direction that the limb is going in, but the limb's not going to look like this. You're going to have to add some flesh to the bone, so to speak. Let's add a few creases across here just so it actually looks baggy. And now for the shoes, I'm going to give them a... I think it's called the lip. My shoe anatomy is a little bit off, so uh, that might be wrong. But basically the, the kind of front bit of the shoe that sticks up, and then a bit there for the trousers to tuck into, because that is absolutely styling, if you ask me. And give that a bit of a bump as well, so it looks soft, like it's actually resting around his ankle. And then the rest of the shoe, well, it's not going to end in a point like that. He's not like a... He's, he's, he's not particularly posh. So we'll round it off, like that and bring it back around to the heel. And again, round it off. The point was only there to decide the length of the shoe. So we can kind of round it off when we get around to drawing it. And if you want, you can add a bit of a sole to the bottom. There you go. Okay, so before we finish, I did promise I was going to show you how to draw this. I don't know if you can really see that. Let me just increase the visibility of it. There you go. So it's the head at an angle, like a 3D angle. I'm going to show you how to do that really fast, really easy, since you got this far. So all you want to do is do your best to picture it, not as a square like that. That's only when he's completely facing you, like dead on. You want to picture it as a 3D object. You want to picture it as like an actual cylinder. So you, the hardest part of this is drawing an oval at an angle. And this bit has to come with practice. You just have to practice this but it's a circle that's at an angle. Now what might be helpful is if you get something that's an actual cylinder in real life, like a cup, or a mug, or a pint glass, or just whatever you have, and look at it, take photos of it, study it at different angles, and you'll kind of learn, oh right, it's just basically the very, very top of it. It's just a circle that's been tilted on its side, really. So if you can get this bit down, the rest of it basically just draws itself. So you come down here, and down like this. And you take this curve, this one here, and you do your best to replicate it along the bottom. Like that. Okay. So we have this pretty much perfect cylinder. And now, depending on which way you want him to face, you draw a line down the middle of where his face is going to be. So I'm going to keep him facing this way. I'll quite like that angle. That angle, rather. And, uh, and then you basically do this these eyes, you know, the mouth and all that. And you apply it to the shape, so it's easier to start with the nearest side and then do the furthest side, in my opinion. So again, we're doing this teardrop shape. Crisscross like this. And now the other one is going to be basically exactly the same, but it's going to be a bit squished. Like that. Wait, I drew the... there we go. Imagine it being squished a bit because of the perspective. So again, crisscross but we're making it a lot less wide but it's as tall if that makes sense and it's all because of the perspective and the smile again it's wider than where the eyes finish we go through that midline and there we go we just kind of curve that up there and jobs are good 
I've actually over sketched that. Let me tidy that up a little bit. So there we go. Um, and you can apply this. You can take this trick and you can pretty much draw Marshmallow's head at any angle. So that's a nice kind of bonus clip for you guys. Um, I'm actually just going to smooth off his hand a little bit here because it's ending in a <laughs> kind of a sharp, blocky shape. So there we go. That is one issue with drawing guidelines. Sometimes you can miss the fact that you've not completely drawn something, um, but it's worth the it's worth the price. So if I completely hide my preview, there we go. So uh, I'm going to finalize this. I'm going to go over this with my inking tool. Um, you should do the same. And yeah, I'll see you guys in just a sec. Wow, if you made it this far, you've got a killer drawing, no doubt about it. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Leave a comment letting me know what you'd like me to draw in the next video. Join the Discord channel, link in the description below, to share your artwork, get some feedback, and talk to me directly. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more great tutorials just like this one. Until next time.